Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and today we are doing the second video I've actually uploaded today. Uh, so loads of content going all over the place for this massive game week 36. But in this video, I'm hoping what I've got for you today is the comprehensive guide to all of the double game week fixtures in game week 36, covering all of the teams and all of the best players to go for as well. So we're going to have it all involved, all in one video. Hopefully this might even be the only video you need to watch uh, for this game week but please do also watch my other videos that'll be awesome uh, but yeah if you find this helpful I hope you do please do leave a like and please do subscribe because I've worked kind of hard on this one to try and give you the guys the best information possible so let's start things off with the fixtures. So in alphabetical order, I've put all the teams here on the left and then what fixtures they have on the right. So these are the double game week teams. Arsenal, Villa, Chelsea, Everton, Leeds, Leicester, Liverpool, Man City, Norwich, Tottenham and Watford and Wolves at the bottom there as well who have got the very, very difficult uh, double game week fixtures. But I am going to reorder these guys because I don't know if they are that useful in this order. So let's order them in order of fixture difficulty. How difficult the pairs of fixtures that each team has is. And this is an order I, I prefer to look at when trying to kind of look at all of the double game fixtures. So this is not necessarily the order in which teams you should be, you know, trying to buy players from. I know Leicester are at the top there, but that doesn't necessarily mean we should go for Leicester's players. It just means that they have the easiest pair of fixtures. Of course, this is all just in my personal opinion. So maybe you guys would want to move things around slightly. But uh, yeah, certainly I would put Leicester at the top with these amazing fixtures, Everton and Norwich. The problem with Leicester, of course, is that they are probably going to rotate heavily after their uh, Euro Europe European game tonight, Euro Europa Conference League. Sorry, I always forget the new league's name. Uh, Europa Conference League, that is obviously on tonight. Uh, uh, it's on right now as I record this video, actually. Um, so I don't know the results of that yet. But uh, yes, yeah, certainly there's going to be a lot of rotation, certainly in the first game, uh, so immediately after their uh, conference game. And then also those two fixtures for Leicester are actually pretty close together as well. So that's another thing to bear in mind. So in, even though Leicester's fixtures are the best, I don't necessarily think that we have to go all in on Leicester there for you. They're actually kind of risky for the very reasons I've just kind of uh, spoken about. Similar thing with Chelsea. They've got very good fixtures, but the Leeds game is just a couple of days before the FA Cup final. So Chelsea are going to prioritise the FA Cup final and potentially rotate in that Leeds game. Uh, we've got Everton with good fixtures, but they're both away. Um, Everton typically better at home. Norwich, we're probably not going to look at too much, but we will obviously talk about all of the teams in greater detail. Watford there, Arsenal. And then after that, the fixtures look a little bit worse. Liverpool and Man City have over okay fixtures they're kind of average right the way to the bottom where we have kind of have Spurs and Wolves with pretty poor fixtures so what we're going to do guys is we're going to go through each and every one of these teams and we're going to pick out a couple of players from each of the team and kind of figure out which ones are the best ones to go for which ones are the ones we want which ones are we considering captaining and all that good stuff so here is the rating system I'm going to use uh, for uh, this double game week 36 video, I suppose. Uh, we're going to d divide players up into three categories. Essential players, so these are really good players that I really think you strongly have to consider getting. Uh, optional players, which I think could be pretty good. And finally, punts, which I don't think you should have too many of these players. I think they could potentially do okay, but I'm definitely not confident in them. Now, if they are not, if a player does not feature in this video, if I don't mention a player in this video or you don't see the player on screen, it's probably because I don't really like them too much as an option. I think I've covered pretty much every single player that I like for Game Week 36 in this one video. So if they're not in here, um, drop a comment if you think of a player that's not in this video and I'll try and reply to some comments. But uh, generally speaking, if they're not in this video, it's because I don't like them. Right, let's start off with Leicester. Uh, they've got Everton and Norwich at home. Really good. Like I was kind of saying earlier, though, I'm expecting big rotation, particularly in that first game against Everton. And then because the two games are so close together, you know, there could be even more rotation. So uh, even though most of the players, um, you know, technically it looks like they have a double game week and that seems amazing. In reality, I think players like even Madison Barnes, Vardy, whoever you want to talk about, most of them are only going to play one of the two games. So it's not going to feel like a double game week at all. They may as well be single game week players. So they're not really worth considering and Madison's got a pretty good uh pretty good opportunity to get some points I suppose so that could be good if he gets rotated against Everton and maybe play some minutes against Everton maybe he could do something against Norwich after that that could be okay that's probably what I'm predicting to happen something like that Fafana has the potential to play a few more games than some of the other defenders but 
really the only serious Leicester player you guys should be considering in terms of bringing them in. Uh, I would say it is uh, is Kasper Schmeichel who will play both games or, or in theory should play both games, should be playing every single game because he's a goalkeeper and he has these amazing fixtures and has the benefit of the fact that he won't get rotated or we hope that he won't get rotated anyway. So uh, Kasper Schmeichel is the only serious player I would consider from Leicester. After that, we really are dealing with punts. Chelsea, similar situation. We're expecting some rotation. And for that reason, there's only a couple of players who I, I think can be considered. Uh, the two players that I think are probably the most likely to start both of these games. And those players are Mount and Alonso. And guys, these are really good fixtures. Wolves defensively have been pretty poor recently. And Leeds are, you know, Leeds, uh, they've kind of been poor defensively all season, haven't they? So there are points to be gained here. But there is just this idea that maybe, just maybe, that all of the players are going to be rotated so heavily. It's going to be very difficult to pick out a player who is going to play both of the two games over the double game week. I would say if any two are going to play both, it would be Mount and Alonso. And then maybe, obviously, Mendy in goal as well, who I've put there as a punt. He's a little bit expensive. You know, I much prefer Schmeichel. So he, he would be a bit of a punt to go for Mendy. And I guess Havertz and Rudiger... If they can get some minutes, then I, I guess that could be okay as well. But I'm not expecting Havertz to, to start both games. I think he'll start one and maybe come off the bench on the other. If he's lucky, if that could give you enough points potentially. Rudiger has got an okay chance of starting both games as well. It's a bit of a, a mystery really. But certainly Mount and Alonso would be the two players that I'm most likely to consider. Outside of that, you know, even like a Reese James, for example, uh, a Timo Werner. These are players that I would not want really at all for going into game at 36. And if you have those players, you could really consider selling them right now. Everton are a team everyone's talking about right now because they have back-to-back -back double game weeks and so much to play for and actually looking okay as well. So there are some Everton players we can genuinely consider. Leicester away, Watford away. The first game is against Leicester, who we know are going to rotate heavily, so there's going to be opportunities there. And Watford, uh, they are just, uh, you know, a team with... <laughs> which usually concede a lot of goals, concede a lot of chances. Uh, so that's going to be good there. And Watford, when Watford play at home, which they will be, they usually don't do so well at home either. So that's something to consider, even if you don't like Everton's uh, away form. Now, Richarlison and Gordon are by far the two standout options. Richarlison's underlying stats have been amazing. He's taken so many shots, even if you exclude his penalties, but he also does have penalties. So that's going to be really good. Gordon I like as well, because he's just such a super cheap option. And he's going to be on those set pieces as well. Uh, Leicester, Watford, two teams that typically don't do so well from set piece chances. So maybe Gordon is going to be able to uh, get in on that somehow. Uh, but there are some other players we can consider. Mikalenko I like as a differential, but he would be a bit of a punt. Uh, Everton defensively are typically not amazing, but you know you never know. You could potentially get something out of, out of out of these games, particularly if Leicester are rotating a lot and Watford don't turn up, which has happened before, right? So maybe you can get some clean sheets there. Certainly with uh, Yerry Mina back in the team, I think that's going to improve uh, Everton defensively. And if Mikalenko is playing as a wing back kind of player as he was last game, that could be really good. And he takes a couple of set pieces as well. Pickford is an okay goalkeeper to go. For certainly, if you're on a bench boost and Pickford is your backup goalkeeper, I think that's an absolutely cool, uh, chill goalkeeper to have as a backup goalkeeper. So I'd be pretty happy with that. And Holgate at 4.2 million, just because he is so so cheap and probably going to be playing these games as well, I think he's a real potential option if you just are looking for a super super cheap defender to go for. He is technically an option, but we are within within the realms of punts here. Richarlison and Gordon are definitely the two players to go for. Maybe we can have a, a, a quick shout out to Damari Gray. Maybe Maybe, but Gordon is cheaper and better, so I don't even really think we'd be considering Gray seriously. Okay, Norwich, we'll keep this brief because I'm sure not too many of you guys are going to be going for Norwich players. You could go for Pukki. You know, like I say, West Ham are going to be rotating because they are playing in Europe as well tonight. Uh, Leicester, maybe a little bit of rotation there. I don't know for sure. Uh, but certainly West Ham, Leicester, not much to play for. Their concentration is in Europe. Maybe Norwich with nothing to play for because they have been relegated. Uh, can play with a bit more freedom, maybe get a couple of goals. Who knows? Uh, but there, there's Pukki there for you. And I've put down Brandon Williams here as well just because he is just so cheap. You can't really go wrong with 3.9 and technically it is a double and it's not even the worst double game week in the world either so players to consider but really we're not going to be looking too hot uh, like heavily on Norwich this week I don't think. Watford, similar situation. Like, we don't trust Watford too much really, do we? Uh, we've got Dennis, Ajal Pedro and Foster written down here. Are they going to be able to keep a clean sheet across these two games? Palace away is a tricky game. Everton at home with Everton with all of they've got to play for at the moment. I can't really see too many clean sheets. But again, because of the price of Foster, I think you could technically consider him. I think because of the price of Jao Pedro, you could technically consider him. I mean... 
Could you score some goals against Everton and Palace? I mean, technically, yeah, I can see it as a possibility. Dennis could potentially do the business as well. Now he's a little bit cheaper. He might be worth going for. But generally speaking, again, what for the team we're not going to be focusing too much on. If you've already got the players, then fair enough. But unless you really are just looking for a really cheap option for whatever reason, I don't think we'll really be going too near Watford either. Arsenal are an interesting one because the fixtures are not bad. Leeds at home is an amazing fixture and we, we reckon Arsenal will score a few goals there. Spurs away, you know, I can see some goals in that as well. So it could be a lot of goals this game week. Uh, so considering the fixtures are not too bad and Arsenal are obviously loads to play for, top four position in good form. Uh, I've not actually got that many players written down here because I actually don't like too many Arsenal players right now, if I'm completely honest with you guys. And that's uh, coming from an Arsenal fan as well, but maybe that's my Arsenal anti-bias because I'm an Arsenal fan. I don't know but certainly we're not trusting Arsenal defensively too much at the moment so if you are going to go for a defender we don't want to be spending too much money Tavares there at 4.3 million is pretty good though and uh you know if, even if he can't keep a clean sheet he looks fairly decent for goal returns he's not quite Alexander Arnold levels or Cancelo levels but he is pretty decent and I think he can potentially get goal contributions over the uh over the double game week he takes a, a, a fairly decent amount of shots and puts in some crosses and stuff I think he's pretty good uh Inketia is pretty nice as well I think there's a good chance of him playing both of these in the double game week and he is just so cheap and Ketia is just the ultimate cheap forward so much so that it's kind of like your Pukis and your 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 Jal Pedros and your Dennis's that we've spoken about already they kind of go out the the window we kind of just forget about them because we've got Inketia right here who plays for a better team got better fixtures or arguably just as good fixtures so we may as well go for Inketia instead who is a you know it's just a better option by the seams of things but of course Saka we all know this by now Arsenal's best player Arsenal's best attacking out output I suppose comes all from Saka on penalties as well now there is just no reason to not uh, go for Saka right now he is an essential pick and I, I definitely think he's on for some good points over the double game week he's going to be nailed on and everything everything is a amazing for Saka so uh, yeah he is definitely the player to get from Arsenal. Okay I'm going to just pretty much skip past Salah and Trent Alexander-Arnold because I don't want this video to be too long uh, and we all know by now Salah and Trent Alexander-Arnold are just um, amazing FBL assets and we should always have them and they're um, absolutely amazing and they'll play both games they're both rested they both uh, you know started on the bench in game week 35 so we're expecting them to play pretty much every single game for the rest of the season now you would not be surprised by that at all they're amazing keep them buy them if you don't have them already amazing. Uh, after that, we kind of are looking at some other players. Robertson, I think if you don't have him already, I don't know if I'd buy him this week, to be honest, because I do wonder if potentially he could get rotated or rested uh, in that Aston Villa away game, just because they have got their FA Cup final a few days after that. So maybe Robertson is going to get his final rest of the season, if you like, uh, uh, there against Aston Villa away, as uh, Simicas may be coming in. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I think there is a chance of that happening. Uh, Matip, to me, is a little bit more negative but obviously the ceiling for Matip is just a little bit lower. So if you want to go for a cheaper uh, cheaper Liverpool pick, then maybe you can go for Matip there. And Luis Diaz, I actually really like as a punt there as well. I know maybe some of you guys are thinking about Jota. I actually prefer Luis Diaz if you're going to go for a, a punt in that Liverpool team. He's just, I, I just, I'm a really big fan of the player. I love watching him and he, he's, he's just good. Like his expected goal involvements are, you know, better than Salah and Mane if you account for minutes played. So if Luis Diaz can get a decent amount of minutes over the double he could you know easily outscore your Salas and your Mane's and stuff like that I think Mane has the potential to get a rest over the double game as well because obviously like I say Salas already had his Alexander Arnold's already had his Mane and Robertson you know are two players that you would say okay maybe these players are going to need a rest at some point during, between now and the end of the season maybe that Aston Villa uh, game is going to be a game where Mane gets a rest there as well so not too keen on Mane uh, but yeah maybe I'm going to be in a little bit harsh here maybe we can consider Van Dyke's and um maybe uh, maybe Jota or whoever. There are other players I suppose I could include on this Liverpool list, but for the sake of trying to keep things fairly compact, uh, I would say that these five players are the players I'm, I would be most interested in from Liverpool in their double against Spurs and Villa. Um, but yeah, they'll obviously do very well, whichever three you end up picking. Right, let's do Man City next. I would say that De Bruyne is the most essential player from Man City. It's very difficult to get your Salas in and your De Bruyne's, particularly if you've got other premiums. Uh, but no, I really, really like the look of De Bruyne. I know uh, City did crash out, obviously, out of the out of the Champions League last night. So they the only competition they have left to play for is the Premier League. So they have to go pretty hard. They have to play their best players. And their best players, 
include Kevin De Bruyne. Obviously, he's a phenomenal player. So I think he could do pretty well here. Newcastle at home and Wolves away. I don't, I can't really decide whether these are good fixtures or not because Newcastle, uh, if, if it was Newcastle away, I would say, actually, this is kind of a tough fixture. I imagine the score line will be pretty low, but it's not. It's Newcastle at home. So is this going to be a tough fixture or not? Not really sure. Difficult to say for sure. Wolves away. Wolves typically are a team that don't concede many goals, but they have conceded quite a have conceded quite a lot of goals recently. Their defence has just not been very good recently at all, Wolves. Uh, but that's an away game. So, again, is that going to be tough? Is that going to be easy? It does seem like Wolves have a downed tools. Downed tools Wolves, maybe we can call them. Um, so, yeah, there is some potential there. So, De Bruyne, I really like. Potential ca differential captain option. Obviously, we're going to be captain in Salah if we're being sensible. But if you really want to go somewhere different, De Bruyne is certainly high up on that list of players you would consider. Other than that, Cancelo kind of has to play because there's no other fullbacks available at Man City at the moment, or no other right back, certainly. Uh, so Cancelo, super, super likely to play both games. And certainly, even though I'm not really sure where these two fixtures stand from an attacking point of view, from a defender's point of view, I really like these two fixtures. You wouldn't expect Newcastle or Wolves to score really any goals, and you would be reasonably confident of two clean sheets over this double. So that's why I've got Cancelo here. That's why I put Laporte in there as well, and Edison as well. If you just want that super nailed on goalkeeper, you've got a little bit of cash to splash. Uh, you could potentially go for Edison there as well and maybe go for a Diaz as well possibly but Diaz is like 0.1 more expensive than Laporte so it doesn't really seem to make much sense to go for Diaz over Laporte there's not enough between the two players for it to be worth um, going for the more expensive one unless you're just feeling random in which case fair enough I've got Foden there as a punt as well he did play 120 minutes last night and he has played a lot of minutes in general for Man City there is the kind of this argument are Man City just going to go full strength every game week or is there going to be a little tiny bit of rotation for those players who have played a lot of minutes and Foden certainly is a player who's played a lot of minutes um so for that reason he, he has to kind of go down into the punt category even though he is typically a good pick if we can guarantee him some minutes uh but yeah I think Foden's okay outside of that you know your Mares, your Sterling your Jesus uh Grealish whoever I would find it really difficult to recommend those players just because they are so risky technically we can put them in the punt category if you want they all have a chance of absolutely banging but I'm just not confident in that enough to uh, to recommend them players to you guys so if you want to go for some other Man City players do so at your own peril I uh they are not featuring in this video though <laughs> Aston Villa, Burnley away and Liverpool at home. Liverpool game, obviously a tough one. Burnley away, that's a not a bad fixture though. I, I feel like with Aston Villa players, they're kind of not, don't buy, don't sell type players. If you already have them, then fair enough. But would I really be looking to buy Aston Villa players right now? I don't know. I'm not fully convinced I would this game week. Their better game week is actually next game week. They've got a much better double in 37 than they have in 36. Uh, but if I were, if I had to pick some Aston Villa players, I guess I'd go for one of Watkins or Cash. But like I say, they're more don't buy, don't sell. But if you fancy a little bit of a punt and you want to go for an Aston Villa player this week, Watkins and Cash would be the two players I'd be interested in. Coutinho, I, I wouldn't really be too keen on. He seems to perform uh, pretty sporadically and only in the, in the very, very small game games and also he's just kind of not not been in great form recently Watkins has you know he got a goal last game week so that's kind of positive he's a forward as well it's always nice to try and find any kind of forward we can put in our team and Matty Cash has kind of just been the best defender uh, for Aston Villa and, and to be fair one of the better defenders in FPL in in total so yeah those are the two Aston Villa players I consider but in general I'm not too interested Leeds, I considered just leaving completely blank, but um, I, I thought, okay, let's try and actually think of a player that I would consider. You know, even if it's like the, the biggest punt in the world, is there one player I would consider from Leeds? And the one player is Rafinha. It is a double game week, so you never know what can happen in the magic of a double game week. Arsenal away, Chelsea at home. Both of these teams, to be fair, have been conceding goals recently. So although I don't have very much confidence in uh, in Leeds, and I do think this is a really, really difficult uh, double pair of fixtures for Leeds to have. If someone's going to get something out of it, maybe it's a Rafinha. I'm not completely convinced by this one. It's a huge punt, but like I say, the two teams can see goals, so maybe Rafinha can do something in these two, I guess. Spurs are a really interesting one because they're a good team, uh, obviously, but they these fixtures that they have are just... They're not ideal, really, are they? Liverpool away, Arsenal at home. I do think, in fairness, that, that, that specifically Son, and I've spoken about this a lot on videos this week uh, and, and stuff like that, these two fixtures really suit Son. So for that reason, I love Son. 
for this double game week. I actually genuinely love Son for this double game week. I think he's a phenomenal pick. Um, you know, him beating the offside trap of Liverpool and going 1v1. Uh, if you need, if you want a player to go 1v1 with Alisson right now, the, the, arguably the best one, 1v1 goalkeeper in the world, then it is going to be an elite finisher, a calm, collected presence like Son. So Son is very well suited to playing against Liverpool and you, you never know. Spurs could technically nick a result against Liverpool. It wouldn't be like the strangest thing in the world. It could definitely happen, even if it is a really, really tough fixture. And then Arsenal as well. Arsenal are going to have a lot of the, the possession. So it's going to favour a uh, an, a counter-attacking style from Spurs, which is going to lend itself to Son being far up the pitch, going on the counter-attack, and it's going to lend to Kane sitting a little bit deeper and play, playing those passes. So that's why Kane, I think, is actually a punt. Because I think the, the highest, the best possible scenario from Kane is actually not so good. I mean, maybe he gets a penalty or something like that. It's difficult to predict when a penalty is going to happen. And Kane does like a goal against Arsenal, to be fair. But the way Kane is probably going to play in both of these games is actually because the other team is going to get a lot of possession, Kane is going to drop a little bit deeper and try and place on in on the counter-attack. So, yeah, for that reason... I think particularly with the amount of money that Kane costs and the uh, players, the other players that you'd have to sacrifice in order to have Kane in your team, he has to go down as a punt really just because the price and everything like that. Yes, he'll probably score quite well, but at what cost? At what, what is the opportunity cost of that? Who have you sacrificed? Does that mean you can't have a Salah? Does that mean you can't have a Son? Does that mean you can't have a KDB? And for that reason, he's a pun. Kulisevsky, great for his price. Like I say, I do think there could be a few goals in these two games. He's a really cheap price, Kulisevsky, at the end of the day. So although he's not one of my favourite players for the game week, uh, he is certainly someone we could consider bringing in. Uh, certainly if you have him, I, I would really strongly consider keeping him as well. And the last team on my list today is uh, Wolves, which is Chelsea away, Man City at home. It's a terrible double game week. Uh, Wolves are at the on the beach right now. They have just down tools completely. They're not doing very well. Down tools, Wolves, as I say. Uh, who are you even going to pick from? They can't seem to defend at the moment. They can't seem to attack all season. Uh, there's nothing to go from for Wolves. Just don't do it. Don't even think about it. Wolves are just, uh, even though they've got a double game week, just forget about them. And before I disappear, I just wanted to summarise with a list of my favourite players for the game week. So these are the players I think are going to score the best, uh, the most amount of points, I suppose, over this double game week. So these are my favourite players, Salah, Son, uh, De Bruyne at the top. I do slightly prefer Son to De Bruyne. I've spoken about that before. Why? So I won't go too much detail into that now. Cancelo I like because these fixtures are very good from a defensive point of view. Saka I think will do well. Trent I think will do well. And Richarlison and Schmeichel in terms of from the, picking from those lower teams, uh, just because of the fixtures and uh, you know the volume of shots Richarlison is taking, love that. Schmeichel, amazing fixtures, pretty nailed on. Possible two clean sheets there, you never know. Uh, or at least one clean sheet you'd hope for, wouldn't you? And uh, maybe some save points as well. So these are the players I really like. I guess you could even say that this is my order of preference of captains as well. Salah is my favourite captain by a mile. Uh, but then after that, Son, De Bruyne could be considered for captaincy. Uh, and then, you know, after that, if you want to go differential, Cancelo, Saka, Trent... Richarlison and Schmeichel are probably a step too far, but there are some players there that could be considered if you want to just go crazy uh, right at the end of the season. You just want to go for a crazy captain. I guess you could pick some of the other players, but I, I, I find it difficult to recommend against Salah this game week, to be honest. And that is the end of the video. I think I've pretty much covered everything that needs to be said in terms of players uh, and uh, and fixtures in, in the Double Game Week 36. So hopefully this was really helpful to you guys. If it was, please do leave a like. It really helps out the channel, helps it out in the algorithm and stuff like that. Do subscribe if you love FPL content because there is just so much of it on this channel at the moment. I'm going out a little bit crazy with the amount of videos I'm putting out. Uh, don't forget, there's already loads of content for Game Week 36 on this channel as well. So if you do want to go check out some of my other videos, I've done a free hit draft. I've done a buy sell keep avoid video i've done my 100 experts video and we've got more to come as well so tomorrow i'll be doing a team selection video of my own team what i plan to do and uh, we might be able to squeeze in a stream tomorrow that's friday evening as well before the uh, the inevitable saturday deadline stream which is very exciting so uh, there we go guys that's it for me today thank you so much for watching and i will see you later mates bye, -bye.